stuff over there in the dirty corner. <laughs> the junk corner. And of course, the beautiful view of the Hudson. I'm gonna miss it. It's so peaceful. So, so peaceful here, as you can probably imagine. Uh, but yeah, so, camera's a little crooked. Let's see if we can fix it. Hey y'all, I'm looking super rough right now. <laughs> no judgment, please. Um, it's been a rough few days, a rough few days. And you wanna know why? I will tell you why. We are looking like this because Unpacked Angles has officially launched, okay? It is Thursday, it launched on Saturday. <laughs> So, uh, it's been a few days, but I have also been packing, helping my mom pack up this house. So, it's been a lot going on, and honestly, I'm not even 100% sure how I managed to pull off editing and getting social media, the website, the newsletter, everything together in the time that I did while packing and moving. There used to be a lot of stuff here. Yeah, we, I've been doing a lot. I'm tired. Let me tell you, okay? It was so much more work than I thought it was going to be. And not that I didn't think it was going to be hard work or anything, but I just hadn't like realized how much time and effort was going to go into some of the things that I had planned on doing. Yeah, the same day I launched, I went to volunteer in the city. So I went across the water. I went to New York City, took the train and volunteered for a conference. And I was there for a few hours. I had a whole lot of other things going on. And your girl, your girl made it like sleep deprived. Yes, but I made it. <laughs> And so now it is really a matter of me figuring out how to do everything that I did in a way to where it's not going to take me as long. I feel like um, it was definitely a learning experience going through for the first time and like uploading videos and figuring out, okay, so like what does the description need to be and the tags and the keywords and like what is all of this i had done a whole lot of research before creating this channel like before i even touched youtube i went and did research because like that's my thing i do research so i learned a lot like i learned a lot from like skillshare and youtube other youtube videos i also subscribed to channels where i thought you know, I could learn, for instance, Erin On Demand. If you don't follow her or subscribe to her channel and you have a business or you have a business mindset, an entrepreneurial mindset, I would encourage you to follow her and subscribe to her channel because it's amazing. But yeah, Launched Unpacked Angles, it's been, I'm still tired. I also have my blog, Dope or Dead Design, and I'm like not trying to slack on that either. So I had the, the blog article to publish this week. And so I have been like running around in my mind. It's just like I'm running in place. I'm like expending a lot of energy. I also met with my virtual assistant over the, like yesterday, just for a few minutes. And so like making sure I'm preparing for that meeting. Plus I have deliverables that I need to get to her in order for her to be able to do her job. It's been a lot and I'm just starting up with my virtual assistant. Shout out Nichelle, hey girl. So I have to make sure like my, like our setup is good so that we can be successful going forward. That's where I'm at. But it's really, it's a really exciting time for me. Like I look, <laughs> A little wild right now but i'm really i'm really um I'm, I'm excited and to top it all off you guys i'm gonna be really honest so i didn't think that the youtube videos like the episodes were gonna come out that well <laughs> only because i'm just like i don't know where to look as far as like the lenses go i have an 11 now but before like for my first few videos i was recording with like a six plus the camera lenses were different like i was just like i don't know where to look i'm kind of feeling like i'm all over the place and 
it would take me like almost two hours to record like the 15 minute videos y'all see. And so um, just being able to like get through that has been a lot. And so I'm working on figuring out how to cut down on that time because Lord, I cannot be recording for no two hours. Going through and editing two hours worth of content just for 15 minutes is a a chore and i'm not ready to outsource my editing just yet so i have officially bitten off a large portion that i don't know if i can chew but i am going to try my damned hardest well, who was it who said this nipsey was it nipsey who said this that um i don't even remember the quote word for word of course that's not how my memory works at all but along the lines of like it's at that point when you when you feel like you've bitten off more than you, wait. <laughs> when you feel like you've bitten off more than you can chew, that's when you start to grow or something like that. I don't know, but I'm about to do a lot of growing. So, yeah. Yo, something really cool though. Somebody asked me what equipment I use. And I just had to sit back and bask in that question because I don't use any equipment. <laughs> Not right now, not yet, because your girl don't got that type of money. I do have a tripod, and I have a ring light, They're like one of the super cheap ones. That's like not too, not it's not very big, but that's it. Like, I don't have any special audio tools. I do have a lapel mic, but I have not used it because when I plug it into my phone, there's a buzzing sound in the background. Yeah, no, I'm literally just using my phone. Now I have an iPhone 11 plus and these like two little lenses here, they're like eyeballs, like I'm good, <laughs> you know? Um, and so, yeah, all I've been using is my phone. So in addition to the YouTube videos that are on the channel, I am also publishing the content for podcast platforms so that people who would rather listen to information or consume their media via audio can do that through podcast platforms. I'm trying to get listed on all of those platforms so that, you know, we can go from audio to video if you would like. I don't think I told y'all about like how I ended up here. And that is a story that I think uh, should be told. Maybe we'll go outside for a little bit. It's chilly. Whew. All right, get this situated. Okay, cool. I think that's that's good. All right, so we have relocated outside. It's beautiful. It's a little chilly. Um, I can see the moon in the daytime. I think I always think that's cool when you can see the moon during the day. But anyway, how I ended up here. So. I was working for the startup and we were like in the midst of like trying to get funding or like trying to get, you know, just basically money. But with startup life comes financial struggles sometimes. And so um, I was struggling so much financially that I could not afford to live in Los Angeles anymore. So I had to relocate back to the East Coast. Um, my mom was staying in the Hudson Valley this is the Hudson Valley. Maybe I should put the river in the background. Hopefully I ain't blocking it too much, but yeah. So relocated here. When I got here, I felt like, you know, such a failure. So I am Jamaican. I was raised in a Jamaican household and well, Jamaican people work hard, you know, I mean, a lot of people work hard, but you know, we're hard workers. And so to have to move back home because of financial issues felt like a, a failure for me, right? Like it was not something that I had planned for, not something that I had anticipated or ever thought that I would be like in this situation. It was tough for me mentally and emotionally to really wrap my head around, hey, like this is okay. Like this happens, you're still working. <laughs> you're working remotely and like you're doing things you're still you're working to make this happen so that this can you know jump off and so you can be paid and it was just very tough to shift my mindset into that frame of thinking i had to come home and i had like just 
got out of a relationship so that was like really heavy on me too um more so ego wise than anything and so i was like recovering my ego was recovering from that situation and then we had you know the financial situation was bogging me down to the point where it was just it was so much i ended up burning out maybe burnout is something that can be talked about as well later in the future as far as content goes for the channel uh because that that is real and i never want to do it again i don't ever want to be in the position again um it was a lot uh actually i think i might do something on that y'all let me know what you think but yeah so i burnt out i had to take some time to recover did that and then it just got to a point where it started it wasn't a good fit for me anymore and i needed to find something else to do or actually needed to stop doing things period i was working so much and like dove in head first into the work and it was just there non-stop all the time that i unintentionally made it part of my identity and it just became a really messy situation for me like mentally <laughs> and uh so eventually I had to I had to step away I had to stop and that was one of the toughest things that I've had to do if you have watched the biases and fallacies video that sunk cost fallacy really played a huge role there you know like i was not ready to step away like what are you kidding me and this was right before a product launch too and i was just like one more step we're almost there we're almost there and i had to step away it was very it was not cool to me like it was just it was hard but i did what was best for me and it took me a while to like recover from that to stop working all the time, to actually let myself rest and recover. And so eventually I got to a point where it was just okay for me not to be doing anything. It's like, all right, well, maybe today I won't focus on things that are related to UX or to like finding a job or to anything. Maybe I'll just take this time to like read or to watch Netflix. By the time I got to like a healthy place, it was just like, boom, yes, okay. Like I could binge watch this show and be okay. And that's how I knew, you know, I was getting better. I wasn't feeling guilty about not doing anything productive. Let's talk about like how self-care is productive. Okay, it is. Uh, but my mind, the way it was working right then, did not see self-care as productive. And I think there's an airplane going all the way or going over. So you might hear that in the background, along with, I guess, nature sounds <laughs> that have been ongoing. But yeah, so I was just very unhealthily tied to work. I got to a place where... I recognized this and you know I worked through this with my therapist shout out to Talkspace because I definitely don't have enough money for just a regular therapist because I don't have health insurance <laughs> in addition to that Talkspace it's not super cheap either there are months that go by where I have to freeze my account uh, like now <laughs> because I can't afford to pay for the month but when I am able to pay my my therapist has helped me um so 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 much yeah so i got to a place that was a lot more healthy i was finally like back on my morning routine stuff established what that looked like for me i've been journaling and you know reading uh consistently listening to podcasts really diving into things that nourish me and that make me happy and that really feed my my mind in the way that I want it to be fed and so it's been spectacular a spectacular recovery so that's how I ended up here I really felt like a failure um, I felt like a failure when I ended up here at my mom's place and then I felt like a failure again after I had to step away from the startup so it was just a lot it was a lot my relationship romantic relationship ended uh, last year my business relationship ended as far as like me stepping away from the startup last year so I had a whole lot of loss and a whole lot of introspection to work with and 
a lot of opportunity for growth too. But in the moment, it didn't feel like anything good. It, it just felt terrible. <laughs> it felt awful. And it's just like, dang, I work this hard. I went to school for this many years and got this many degrees just to end up here, just to end up feeling like this. So yeah, that's the story of how I got here. And when I stepped away from the startup, I had been, you know, getting support from my therapist and from a few close friends that I know, in addition to um, a couple mentors. And one of them suggested that I start creating content, like video content. She suggested starting small, like for Instagram, just doing some videos on UX things. And I really took that and ran with it. It was bug. <laughs> I took it and ran with it and that's how Unpacked Angles was born and of course like it's not just an Instagram thing like we're on Instagram follow us Unpacked Angles at Unpacked Angles but um nah like I always go big or go home <laughs> like it's not too too big you know what I'm saying but like I was like Instagram nah let's do YouTube and so ta-da that's how that's how we here so yeah I guess that's the backstory of how I'm here slash how Unpacked angle started so there you go a two in one so from there i just started doing research about how to make a youtube channel how to make a good youtube channel how to be good at like talking to a lens or talking on camera or like you know doing all this stuff that i'm doing i did a lot of research before even touching anything with youtube by the time i got to a place where it's just like all right i think i'm ready to like start recording that was like a month later i know i was trying to launch i think at the end of january and so i was going to have like the month of january to be editing but as it turns out i didn't realize how long these videos were going to take me to record how long the outlines were going to take to make and so <laughs> that schedule changed real quick and it was even challenging to launch on the 29th of february so we did it though <laughs> we here it's been a process and it's been a beautiful process everything has been unfolding in a natural way it's just like i'll find something or i'll read something here or listen to something there and it's like oh that would be cool to incorporate or man maybe i should do that or yeah i'm gonna do that for next time there's some things still in the works but you know i have what i need for it to be good enough right now. And so I'm real happy about that. Real happy with that. And that's really it. Yeah, I took that suggestion for making content and I ran with it. I ran with it. So that is why I'm focused on UX and self-care, like self-care, self-development, because all of that plays an important role in your success as just a human being, as a person, but also like as a UX researcher, a UX designer, a UX professional, just a professional period within your field. Once you get to know yourself a little bit better and can better develop yourself into, um, I guess, the person that you want to be or develop into the habits that you want to have, then it just kind of is a domino effect as far as like how it positively influences the rest of the things that you touch, whether it's like your personal life, your relationships, your finances work stuff it's all important it's all intertwined nothing about it is separate no matter how hard we try to act like it it's not i'm getting cold <laughs> i get cold easily of course and this hoodie is warm i got this hoodie in japan i think i got it did i get it in tokyo mm, no i think i got this in masawa it's a hoodie and a dress i call it a hood dress i can't remember what i named her oh man I gotta look on Twitter. I gave her a name. <laughs> I gave her a name, but it's a Kangol. Look, you see, it's a freaking Kangol. Like what? I only thought they made hats, but apparently they make hood dresses too. If I could be a piece of clothing, this is what I would be. It's nice and comfortable, it's warm, but it's not warm enough for this weather alone. So I'm about to go inside. I hope that you know, this gives you a little bit of insight as far as where Unpacked Angles came from. 
I also, you know, want to build community within UX and contribute to the field and like get, you know, listeners and viewers to participate um, and learn from you guys as well. But, you know, in addition to that, it's just like a life struggle turned into something that can hopefully help other people and something to kind of do on the side, something that I can be creative with and have full creative license with and that's something that's important to me and i'm looking forward to seeing how this grows and how you know we get shit popping <laughs> on that note i will catch you guys in the next video oh it's like a, a gang of nets over there all right i'm out <laughs> deuces <laughs>